Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I was just sitting here, and what came to my mind was a lion. What does a lion have to do with you? Well, here it is. You notice when a lion roars, the people's first reaction is fear, intimidation. They want to run and hide. They don't know how close that lion is, and they don't want to be eaten up alive, now do they? So, everybody takes precautions. They take cover. But you notice, while everybody else, the birds are flying away, the animals are stampeding across the plains to get away from the lions, do you notice who's not running? Mm -hmm. The lion cubs. The lion cubs don't run in fear when the lion roars or growls. They don't run in fear. You know why? Some of them, even after a roar, would jump all over the lion and be biting and playing with his tail and clowning with him. You know why? Because the lion is his parent. It's his father. It's their father. The lion is the father to the bear cubs. The bear cubs can play with their father because they know the father loves them. They don't run and hide at every roar, at every grunt, every groan, every, any, every growl. They don't run. They stay. They play. They... They huddle up together. Sometimes they get even closer. And they just pester that poor little old lion. <laughs> he starts snapping to get them off of him, but they keep playing. So listen, when you play with your parent, when you clown and play with someone you love, someone you're close to, you know it's okay. Now, I remember when my... Uh, my husband and, and his baby son was playing with him. And his baby son, I guess, was around 12, 13, 14 years old. And he'd jump all over, all, all over my hubby. And, and uh, Milton would, I mean, if you didn't know Milton, you would think he, his son better stop because Milton's going to hurt him. The more Milton yelled, get off of me, I said, get off, now stop, I mean it. I mean it. The more his son would play with him. <laughs> and he'd play with him so long that all the growling and, and yelling that Milton would do would end up being a chuckle and a warm laugh. He said, oh boy, you get on my nerves. Because the he knew his father loved him. Oh, <sighs> Listen to this point. When all around us starts to give way and you begin to see the judgment of God here and there and, and, and the anger of God being manifested and the wrath of God. Is God your father? Really? Then why are you so afraid? Why are you spending time on the internet? listening to what this one has to say and what that one has to say and worried about the end times and what's going to happen with America. Is America mystery Babylon? Is this going to happen? What's going to happen with Trump? Oh no, we're going down, down, down. Ah! Now the lion may be roaring right now. America may be shaking at its knees. But who is your daddy? That's what I got to ask you. Who is your daddy? Huh? I remember when I, I was a kid and I would sneak up while my father had the newspaper and I would ease on the ground where he couldn't see me and I would get down right under his feet and start tickling. And I get a good grip and I get to tickle. He'd, get off, come on now, stop, stop. You're going to make me pee on myself, stop. <laughs> We would both laugh so hard. I could play with my father because I knew he loved me unconditionally. I knew he was happy just the fact that I was his child. Mm, brought him joy. 
God loves so much more than the most loving parent on this earth. Do you think he's going to harm his babies? People may harm them, but God's not. So when he starts coming down like a reign of terror, and he starts growling and his echo is heard around the world and people are starting to shake and quiver at the knees. You can play with him. You can play with him. You can spend time. You can worship. You can praise him. You can sing to him. You can laugh and joke with him. I laugh and joke with the Lord. I clown with him when I do something stupid. Oh, that's your fault. You made me like this. <laughs> I clown with him because he's my daddy. He's my father. He loves me beyond anything I could do, even loving myself. He, he is love. He's the epitome, the, oh, goodness, the, the love personified. When he growls, don't fear when there's a shaking going on, don't run and hide. Run to him. Be at peace in him. Rest in him. Enter into his rest. You know, the Seventh-day Adventists talk about the Sabbath being the time for rest, God's ordained time of rest. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. The fulfillment of the Sabbath. When you enter into the rest of Jesus, you are living a Sabbath lifestyle seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So when threats come and fear comes and intimidation comes and problems come and all kind of stuff comes against you, your fortress, your father, He's working on your behalf. He's not going to leave you to the elements. When my father and he would take me to Sheepshead Bay, and he'd sit there and he'd read the paper. You know, in the summertime, we'd both be out there swimming. Well, he knew how to swim. i just splash around. But in the wintertime or in the spring, when it was too cold to get in the water, he would still take me there and he'd sit and read the paper and, I would play, but in the, if he didn't feel like swimming, I would just play around the water. And one time, I'll never forget this. My father was reading the paper. He could not see me. He told me, do not step in too deep. Stay right here. Because if a wave comes, it'll knock you down. You could drown. So you stay right here. You don't go any. You stay right here. Well, dum diddy dum dum had to know, well, what is it like over there? You know, you tell somebody don't, they're going to do. Yeah, and that's what I did. And dum diddy dum dum got out a little further. Couldn't have been no more than a foot or two further into the water. But I was like, what, four feet, three feet tall? A wave came and knocked me down, boy. All I could do was hold my hand up above the water. Now, listen, I'm talking about the intimacy with a father. All I could do was hold my hand up. Now, I got myself there. I made my bed. I should have laid in it, right? I was guilty. I was wrong. I was disobedient. But my father loved me. And even though I was disobedient, we were still close. So, and I'm not talking living a lifestyle of disobedience. We momentarily get disobedient from time to time. No need in lying. I don't care how holy you live. There are areas of disobedience in your life. So here I was on the beach, encumbered with water, couldn't breathe. And all I knew was the only way he was going to find me is if I keep my hand up above the water. And somehow he lowered the paper and he noticed my hand and he jumped up and I could see him running towards me. And next thing I knew, I was back under the water and I felt something grip my hand and I went flying in the air. 
He dried me off. He said, that's why I told you not to get into the war, you dummy. He wasn't mad. He was just glad I was okay. He wasn't even mad. We didn't leave and go home and he's driving in a huff and all angry. No, that was my father. He loved me. He was just protecting me. We do stupid things in life. We bring on consequences that shake us to the core. And we are petrified, knowing it's our fault. But guess what? The God of judgment, the roaring lion, the angry, wrathful God, your daddy, will hold you, will correct you, tell you where you went wrong, dry you off, dust you off, and set you back on your way so that you go the right way you're supposed to go. You know what my father told me after he pulled me out of the water and dried me off? He said, next thing I look up, you're back in the water playing again. He didn't come and snatch me away. He just kept a closer eye. He didn't tell me not to go back in the water. He thought I would not want to go back in the water, but I loved the water, so I went back in. We had a beautiful day. Your father in heaven is watching over you. No matter the economy. No matter if we go into war. No matter if there's crime. Crazy crimes that start to occur. It doesn't matter. Your daddy is God. With a daddy like that, baby, you're okay. You have no need to fear. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have no need to fear. Uh, this is what I want to ask you. Do you know who your daddy is? <laughs> okay, let me ask you again. Do you know who your daddy is? Do you know? Do you, do you have a clue? I know excuse me, who my daddy is. I know that God loves me. I had that experience because I pursued him, because I lived as holy as I possibly could in spite of the kinks, the failures, and the points, the moments of disobedience. I'm still trying. I never gave up the race. You know, there's a, a scripture that says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. You'll never get the prize if you never get to the end of that race. When God is roaring, all the things that you're nervous about, the government, the racial unrest, the financial collapse that you know, that you see as a hammer hanging over your head. You're waiting for the axe to fall, but God's got the axe, and God is your daddy. Don't you forget that. Now, instead of going all over the place trying to find out who's, who's killed who and what's going wrong and all of that, you ought to be asking God, okay, God, what do you have to say for me, for me? in these last days. Put my soul at rest. Let me know that you're for me. Let me know I can count on you. Encourage me. Talk to me. Sit me on your lap. And lift up my spirit and remove the fear. Because I know you love me and I know you're for me. You got to know who your daddy really is to be able to do that. Who's your daddy? 